Ah, you're here. Good. Uh, take the easy chair by the window. <laughs> Comfortable. Good. Uh, the book is uh, on the shelf. Yes, here it is. Bear blew out the match. A very absorbing story of death and mystery on a small island. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was an evening early in May, and the waters around the Cape, just off the coast of Massachusetts, were buried under a fog as thick and as massive as any you'd want to see. Moving cautiously, a small boat makes its way slowly toward one of the islands off the Cape. In the boat, there are Elisha McCumber and Anne Waldron. Well, this is something. I'm glad we're almost there. Yep. You been scared, Miss Walden? Oh, not scared, Elisha, but if I hadn't bumped into you in New Bedford, I'd have spent the night there. Not even Noah himself could have persuaded me to take a boat ride in this fog. What's new on the island? Oh, nothing much. Unless you're counting a mysterious stranger. Mysterious? Calls himself David Highland. Gets mail from New York, Washington, Boston, but near every day. Nobody knows what's in it. He don't talk. Maybe he's an ex-sailor with a sweetheart in every port. Uh, this could be. But I'm chairman of the board of selectmen, and it's my duty to keep the peace on that island. Well, you've always managed, Elisha. What else is new? Leonard Case is there, too. Leonard? Yep. Four weeks now. Then Myra Van Wick must be there. She ain't. I guess Mr. Case will be mighty glad to see you, Miss Walden. Why should he be glad? Well, I reckon the fella gets pretty lonesome with the plast cast on each leg. Plaster cast, Leonard. Got both his legs broken in an automobile accident a few months ago. I figured you might know about it. No. No, I didn't know. Elisha, are you sure Myra isn't on the island? Mm hmm. You're still sweet on the fella, ain't you? He doesn't mean a thing to me. Uh, maybe not. But summer of last year, when Mr. Case turned from you to that Van Wick woman, uh, yep. Well, I was mighty glad the season ended without a killing. Thanks very much, Elisha. I'll go the rest of the way alone. Oh, I don't mind taking you to your door, Miss Walden. You don't have to. I'll just follow this path around Myra Van Wick's house, and that'll take me right home. Good night, Elisha. And thanks for everything. Good night, Miss Walden. Be careful. Maybe I should have... Oh, well. Nothing ever happens here. What was that? What on earth? That's Myra's house and it's closed tight. Someone's coming this way. Someone... Hello. <gasps> Fancy meeting you here. Who are you? What do you want? You sound like a native. Suppose I answer your first question first. Who am I? David Highland. Highland? Why don't you call me David? Then I can call you... Ann Walden. Ann. Lovely. Your house is about 200 feet from here, isn't it? Yes. You expect to live there alone? What business is it of yours? Just this. You won't tell anyone that you met me tonight, will you? I won't. That's what I said. Because if you do... One of us will become very useless. Hey, Mr. Case, there's a dame here to see you. A dame? So we're in, sir. Okay, Tootsie. Help yourself to the board. But don't make him nervous. He's in a very delicate condition. Anne! Oh, Anne, darling, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Leonard. You look beautiful, I'm all beautiful. Hey, Mr. I... Case, is it all right if I take the car and go for a drive into town? Yes, yeah, speed it. Go any place. I'll pick up some chow for the icebox while I'm there. You got a couple of preferences, maybe? Buy anything you like, but for Pete's okay. sake. Okay. <laughs> well, don't look so surprised, Dan. The guy saved my life. Pulled me out of the wreck before the car went up in flames. Hang it if he doesn't turn out to be the best cook and butler this side of the Atlantic. I, uh... I was hoping you'd come in. You were? Well, what do you mean? I knew you were on the island. Oh, well, I should hold you. No, I saw you. From here? Mm-hmm. But my house is... 
Leonard, what have you done to this home? You like? I had oh. these walls ripped out and the glass put in their place. Nah, I don't miss a trick. I simply look through this telescope and the island has no secret. I see. Leonard, when is Mara coming? She isn't. Too busy in New York? I hope so. The fact is, Mara and I are washed up. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Is it? The crazy thing about it is that I really thought I loved her. Yeah, I must have been out of my mind. Did you marry her? Uh, it wasn't that crazy, Anne. Put that crawl on your bed. Anne, I want you to meet Mabel, my little helpmate. <laughs> when Sam's away, Mabel does the little odd jobs that make me comfortable. Watch. Mabel, my pipe. Oh, you're slipping, old girl. You forgot my tobacco pouch. Thank you. Now you may go out and get your lunch. And don't dig up anyone's garden. For pity's sake, where did you pick that up? <laughs> Myra gave it to me. Wow. Everyone to his taste. I don't think I... What's that? What? On your bed. It... Oh, it's a buckle off a woman's shoe. Well, what do you know? The thing that bird will bring home with her. Wait a minute, Leonard. I've seen this buckle before. Haven't you? Haven't I? Why, I don't remember. That's Myra's. What are you talking about? Myra's in New York. Oh, we'll soon find out. They're giving that telescope. But, uh... Hello? Yes, yes, she's here. Would you like to talk to her? Uh-huh. What? Good heavens, of course I'll tell her right away. Anne, you can stop looking. What is it, Leonard? Myra's here on the island. Lashing McComber just phoned. He wants you to go over to her house. She's been murdered. Elisha? Hey? Oh, Miss Waldron. Uh, you got here pretty quick, didn't you? I can't believe it. Myra's dead. When did it happen? Sometime last night. Last night? The coroner says it must have took place between 11 and 12. That's impossible. Is it? Why? Well, it was close to 12 when I left you. I took the path that runs around this place. The house was locked up. Did you look to see? No, there, there was no reason for me to look. You yourself told me Myra wasn't on the island. Well, I reckon I was wrong, Miss Waldron. Miss Van Wick must have got here while I was in New Bedford. And that must have been it. Uh, what uh, was that, Miss Waldron? The door. As I was passing by here last night, I heard the door open and close uh, twice. Uh, of course, you didn't see anyone, did you? As a matter of fact, I, 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 I didn't. It's too bad. Would you like to see the body? Must I? It can't hurt you. It's right there in the living room. Come along. There she is, just like I found her. Oh, her head's almost in the fireplace. Yeah. She was just about to light the fire with that match when death blew it out. You got any idea what killed her? I? Well, why should I? I thought you might have. It was cyanide of potassium. Oh, how awful. Uh-huh. But there's one thing that puzzles me, Miss Waldron. How did the killer get her to take it? I... I don't know, Elisha. There ain't a sign of a struggle in the room, and there ain't a mark on her body. Cyanide works like lightning. That means she was killed right here in this room. But, Elisha, you keep talking about murder. How, how do you know it wasn't suicide? Of course, I, I ain't never seen a corpse that get up to dispose of the evidence. Maybe she chewed it. Huh? Uh, how would you be knowing about that, Miss Walter? That piece of gum near the fireplace. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I must be slipping. Now, we'll see what the coroner has to say about this gum. It was suicide, Elisha. I'm sure of it. Why? Ask Leonard Ace. He can give you all the facts. I'm asking you, Miss Walton. I don't know them. Now, why did you send for me? I wanted to hear what you had to say in the presence of the corpse. But why me? To my way of thinking, Miss Van Wick was murdered. And I thought maybe I ought to have a talk to one person that had both motive and opportunity. That's you, Miss Walton. <laughs> Well, are you 
trying to break down the door? I must see you, Mr. Harlan. All right. Would you like to look at me here, or would you rather come in? I'll come in. Good. Sit down. No, thanks. Mr. Harlan, what were you doing out in the fog last night? You won't call me David, will you? Will you answer my question, please? Sure. What were you doing out in the fog last night? I was going home. So was I. That makes us even, doesn't it? Not quite. Myra Van Wick's been murdered. What? You don't say. On this quiet, peaceful island? Did you tell anyone you met me? No. Good girl. Yes. Always play it smart. But I will, Mr. Highland. Will you? Would you like to hang for the murder of Myra Van Wick? What? Suppose I told Elisha that I saw you coming out of her house last night. But, but you didn't. How do you know I didn't? Well, I didn't go in after I left you. I, I went right home. Can you prove it? Can I? Now, look here, Mr. Highland. What are you trying to do? I don't want you to make any mistakes. You protect me, and I'll protect you. You killed Myra. Ah, don't point, Miss Walden. It's bad manners. Why did you do it? <laughs> All right. I'm going to find out, Mr. Highland. And what you came to this island for. And when I do... Yes? That... That letter on the desk. That's Myra's handwriting on the envelope. Put it down. Mail from New York yesterday. Give it to <laughs> Didn't have to break my arm. I'm sorry. It's such a pretty arm, too. And that's such a pretty neck. What? What are you going to do? Nothing. If you say one word about this letter to anyone, I'm going to put a rope around that neck for keeps. Leonard, what am I going to do? Elisha thinks I killed Myra. And I can't prove that I didn't. Anne, I know you didn't, no matter what you thought of Myra. Oh, uh, Elisha was here. I told him that she wanted to marry me, but, well, I couldn't do it. Then she loved you? I'm afraid so. Leonard, it's possible, then, that Myra committed suicide. No, just before you came in, Elisha phoned me. That piece of gum you found, there was no poison in it. Oh, oh. Don't, don't worry, darling. We'll find a way to get you out of it. But, Leonard, who left that gum there? A killer, no doubt. Listen, man. what about David Highland? Who? Ah, uh, don't pretend you don't know him. I saw you with him a little while ago. You saw me? Mm-hmm. This telescope. Oh. Why did you go to his house? I can't tell you. All right. Then maybe you can tell me what you and he were wrestling over. It was a letter, wasn't it? Leonard, please don't ask me. Wasn't it? I... <laughs> yes. From Myra. Myra? Well, what's he got to do with you? I don't know. But, oh, promise you won't tell anyone. Leonard, you must promise. Why? Well, just promise, that's all. <laughs> all right, dear. <laughs> well, we've got to know it was in that letter. Yes. But how are we going to get it? Now, I'll keep my telescope trained on his house. When David Highland goes out, I'll tell Sam. <laughs> Shut up, Mabel. Mabel. Leonard, that shoe buckle she brought in here this morning. Yes? That was Myra's. Oh, what a... Dunderhead I am. Why didn't I see it before? See what? Where did Mabel find that buckle? Certainly not in Myra's house. She must have found it outside somewhere. Don't you see what that means? Uh Uh-huh. That Myra wasn't killed in her own house. Now all we have to do is find out where she was killed. Leonard, how well have you got that crow train? Pretty well. Why? That buckle. If you told her to put it back where she found it, would she do it? Mm, I don't think so. She's not that smart. Uh Oh. Besides, it's been hours since she brought it here. All right. Then that letter from Myra might tell us what we want to know. I want to know the minute that man goes out. Now let me see. The desk... He would keep it locked. I don't think he'd be so careless as to leave it under the chair cushions. No, that would be too obvious. Oh! Oh. Hello? Anne. Oh, what is it, Leonard? Is he coming back? I haven't seen him, but it's getting uh, dark, and I'm afraid I won't be able to keep watch for you much longer. I can't leave now. I've got to find that letter. But it might be dangerous. Suppose he walks in on you. Well, I'll have to take that chance. Hold the wire. I'll go look some more. All right, but hurry. Chair cushions. Oh, no, of course not. That liquor cabinet. Who would think of looking in a liquor cabinet for a letter? 
Only it didn't get dark so that... There. Hello, Leonard. Any luck, Ann? Plenty. I've got it. Bring it over here right away. Leonard. Well, what's the matter? Well, why don't you get out of there? I'm afraid it's too late. Well, Leonard, send for Elijah McComber, quick. Is it Highland? I can't see. It's dark. Get Elijah. Ann. Ah! Ann. Ann. Thinking, Your Honor, I'm going for a walk. Where's Miss Walden? Anne? Is she supposed to be here? Yep. Let's go into your house. All right, if you like. While we're doing that little thing, would you mind telling me what this is all about? In time. Where is she? I don't know. When I left for the village, the house was empty. When I came back, it was still empty. She spoke to Mr. Case on the phone from here. Really? Well, perhaps I should lock my door when I go out. Do you think my neighbors would disapprove? Ain't none of my business. But this matter of Miss Waldron. Mr. Highland, would you be a gum chewing character? Gum chewing? <laughs> Sometimes. When I want to get rid of a bad taste. Now how did you get rid of the gum? Spit it out on the floor? What do you mean? Over there, by that table. But, well, I. Maybe be... you will a lot sooner than you'd be expecting. Are you ready to talk about Miss Waldron? Of course. Yes. I think she's beautiful. I think she's a charming girl. Now, if she were only a bit more friendly... Is that all you've got to say? No, but for the moment, it'll have to do. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you'd better come with me. Where? To Miss Van Wick's house. Why, there? Me and my boys have given that place a mighty fine once over. Somebody that done a killing could think that we'd have no more reason to go back there. But we have, Mr. Highland. Come on. <laughs> Well, are you satisfied, Elisha? There isn't a trace of Ann Waldron upstairs or even down here in the cellar. I ain't through looking yet, Mr. Hyland. Where do you expect to find her? In the coal bin? Maybe. Hand me that shovel. <laughs> All right, but I... On the other hand, uh, maybe you better do the shovel. Hmm? I can keep an eye on you that way. Well, anything to make a select man happy, especially if he's the chairman of the board. <clears throat> You're a mighty calm young fellow, ain't you? Pretty sure of yourself. Uh, I was brought up right... What do you know about Miss Van Wick? She's dead. The postman mentioned you got a letter from New York this afternoon. It was in a woman's handwriting. I get lots of letters. Uh, from dead people? Well, you can never tell about that, Elisha. Sometimes you can swear a person is alive, and then after you've known him for a while, you... But this letter, Mr. Highland, the postman had an idea it was in Miss Van Wick's handwriting, huh? From what he remembers of her handwriting... I didn't kill her. That's what you're leading up to. Yep, that's what I'm leading up to. You got that letter? Nope. <laughs> That'll suit yourself, Mr. Highland. You don't have to talk now. Uh, wait a minute, huh? That suitcase, it was buried in the coal. Well, I'll be swan. Oh. Jumping G. Hostel. Jewel. Diamonds. Well, it must be a million dollars worth. Mm, so that's it. That's why Miss Van Wick was killed. Uh-huh. She came back here too soon. Whoever was hiding this stuff here figured that she'd be in New York, maybe. And maybe not, Mr. Highland. No. Maybe that person knew she was coming back. Maybe him and Miss Van Wick were sort of partners in a business that wasn't legal. Does that make sense to you, Mr. Highland? I don't know. I don't go in for guesswork. How about cyanide of potassium? You're singing way off key, Elisha. But you've got the right tune, ain't you? Put your hands up, Mr. Highland. <laughs> All right. Now, just you walk up them stairs. And no monkey business, my friend. I got an eye like an eagle. Operator, one, two, four. Hello. Elisha, this is Leonard Case. Do you found Ann Waldron? No. Oh, good heavens, what are you doing about it? I got searching parties out all over the island. But what about David Highlands from his house that she called for help? He'll talk, Mr. Case, about Miss Walden and about Miss Van Wick, too. You mean that he killed Myra? Yeah, well, oh, Mr. Case. Yes? The 
folks here in the village tell me your car's been parked all day by the general store. Uh, I know. My butler, Sam Ray, took it this morning. Send him back if you see him, will you? Ain't nobody seen him since 2 o'clock this afternoon. I reckon you'll have to be advertising for a new butler, Mr. Case. Well, that's ridiculous. Sam wouldn't quit me without notice. Uh, maybe not, but he ain't on the island. <laughs> Okay, sister, on your feet. Shut up. They're going to take a ride now in the open sea. Fresh air and just enough fog to keep me and you out of sight. Nice, isn't it? The way that fog comes in over the water. Perfect hideout. Even better than this stinking old tool shed. <laughs> Tough, ain't it? You got so much to say, but that gag don't let you. Yeah. Okay, get going. Right down to the boat. Then maybe when we get way out in the ocean, I'll tell you a nice, interesting bedtime story. Okay, baby, this is it. Yeah, you're dying to talk, ain't you? Okay, I'll take her off the gag. <coughs> hey, you can scream, too. There ain't a soul around here to hear you, eight miles offshore. Sam Ray, when Leonard Case finds out about this, he's... <laughs> What's he gonna do, fire me? He'll... What have you got against me? Why did you bring me out here to kill me? I don't like snoopers, baby. But I was only trying to protect myself. Elisha McComber suspected me of killing Myra Van Wick. I didn't do it. I had to find out who did it. So you went after a letter. I thought it might give me a clue. Yeah. Did that letter contain any evidence, Sam? Plenty. What kind of evidence? <laughs> You're sure a dame, ain't you? Well, you can't be afraid to tell me now. I'll never have a chance to... Will I... How right you are. Well, are you going to tell me, or aren't you? Baby, that letter meant the difference between a million bucks and zero. That Highland guy... Then he was mixed up with the death of Myra. Shut up. What's the matter? Listen. There's a boat out there. You make one sound. You listen. <laughs> are you dirty little... Yeah. I'm going to finish you off right now and get out of here. That's the whole story, Leonard. If it hadn't been for Elisha, I'd be at the bottom of the ocean now. Oh, man, darling, I don't want to say to you. I feel as well, though so it's all my fault. Nonsense. Oh, but Sam worked for me. I trusted him. How was I to know that he was a diamond thief and that he killed Myra? He did kill Myra, didn't he, Elisha? I reckon so. We got in a way of knowing now with him at the bottom of the ocean. Well, all I can say is thanks for saving Anne. Now, how about a party to celebrate? Sam gone, I guess we'll have to rely on Mabel to do the honors. Mabel! <laughs> candy! Candy, Mabel, for the lady. <laughs> oh, if she could only cook. <laughs> Mabel! Oh, she flew out the window. Leonard, she's flying toward Myra's house. Candy for the lady, eh, Mr. Kane? I don't understand what got into that bird. She's never disobeyed orders. And I reckon she ain't disobeying him now. She's flying to the only lady she knows. All right, Mr. Kane, she can talk now. You've got a mind to. But I got nothing to say. That's well, your privilege. But you killed Myra Van Wick by sending that bird out last night with a piece of poison candy. And you done it because you knew the lady would take the candy from the bird, maybe as an omen of reconciliation. Miss Waldron, did you know that Mr. Case and Miss Van Wick was husband and wife? Married? Yep. 
I asked the police in New York to do a routine check on Miss Van Wick, and they come up with the dope. Leonard. All right, so what? I didn't want her around. I told her to stay away from the island, to leave me alone. And you had good reason to. She might have found them diamonds in her coal bin. That would have been too bad, wouldn't it, for you? <laughs> What brings you down to the beach at this hour of night? You. And some of the things you can explain to me about Leonard. Oh. Well, Leonard Case was a smuggler. Sam Ray worked for him. So did a lot of others. It was my job to round up the gang from the top down. Your job? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm an agent of the Treasury Department. Oh. Well, that tells me a lot. Oh. Well, that's why I had to be so tough with you on occasions. I couldn't take the chance of being implicated in a murder... I would have had to explain my position to Elisha. But he's an officer of the law. Rounding up a gang of smugglers was my job. Finding a murderer was his. Yes. But what about that letter you received from Mara? That, my dear, was an authorization for me to enter her house and search it. Oh. Oh! What a... (laughs) What a little dope you are. Mr. Highland. David. (laughs) Come on, let's take a walk. So closes tonight's Crime Club book, Death Blew Out the Match, based on the story by Kathleen Moore Knight. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation, Roger Bauer produced and directed. (laughs) Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the Crime Club. Well, I'm the librarian. (laughs) Ah, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have a very unusual story about a murderer who was revealed by postage stamps. It's called For the Hangman. In the meantime? (laughs) Well, in the meantime, there's a new Crime Club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's available now. Quite all right. And we'll look for you next week. program came to you from New York. Mutual's Mystery Hour continues immediately after station identification with a casebook of Gregory Hood. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.